in past chapters when we wanted to measure how far something went, uh, we usually used uh, displacement, like a delta x, how far did it go? All right, we measure that from x final minus x initial. So what we need is in rotational motion where something is going in a circle, we need some sort of equivalent to that, somehow where we can say how far around a circle it's gone. If we wanted to, we could do something in meters where we were measuring, you know, around a circle, how far around does it go, uh, and calculate, you know, circumference of a circle and how much of the circumference did it go through. Uh, but it, it becomes kind of a mess to calculate. So what we want is something a little bit easier to use than that, even though it, it may be something we're less familiar with. To measure rotation angle, we're actually going to use an angle theta, right? And so we're going to have same sort of thing, delta theta would be like theta final minus theta initial. So we're going to measure the angle that it rotates through. It measure, rotates from this angle to this angle, and that's how we're going to measure sort of how far it's gone around the circle. So what it looks like is something like this, uh, where we have our delta th theta here, how far it's gone around the circle. Okay, We have r, the radius of the circle, and delta s is what we call the arc length. This would be kind of our meters equivalent here. Right? So we have this would be kind of our meters, this would be our radius, and here would be our angle. And this is how we're going to measure motion throughout the circle. So if it goes from here to here, we're going to measure that with our delta theta. Move from this angle to this angle. And there's this important relationship, delta theta equals delta s over r, that kind of gives us a relationship between meters, radius, and our angle. Now keep in mind the angle is measured in not degrees, like we're used to doing, but radians. Okay, So all of our calculations with angles are done in radians. Angular velocity, uh, it's sort of like how fast is it going around the circle. Right? Normally, our velocity was equal to our displacement over time. Right? That was one of our old equations. Displacement over time was velocity, meters per second. Right? Well, our equivalent in angular terms and in, in circular terms is going to be omega. That's going to be our angular velocity. So omega is angular velocity. And that's going to be equal to um, our equivalent for displacement, right? Delta x was delta theta over time. Well, the unit for that would be radians per second. Right? How many degrees, well not really degrees, but what, how did our angle change in radians per second? How quickly are we changing our angle is angular velocity. Now there is something useful with our regular meters per second velocity that we can also do with circular motion. Uh, and it looks something like this. So our velocity would be our, our change in meters, in this case our arc length, delta s, over time. Well, remember delta theta was s over r, or delta s over r, so delta s would be delta theta r. So we could substitute that in and say v equals delta theta r over t. Well then if we come up here, if we solve for delta theta, well delta theta is omega t, so we'd end up with omega t r over t, so those disappear, and we get that velocity so maybe we'll write this out because it's a useful equation to use, that our velocity, our meters per second velocity, is equal to our angular velocity, omega, times the radius of the circle. So these are kind of our important equations when it comes to angular velocity. Uh, let me give you an example of how these work together. If we're looking at a car rolling along, right, the tire spins this way, but the car goes that way, well, the angular velocity of the wheel times its radius is actually going to give us the velocity of the car this direction, how quickly it is moving that direction in a linear form. So that's how we can translate this circular motion of the wheel into the linear motion of the car would be through this equation. Uh, another important term that you're going to run across uh, has to do with our next topic, centripetal acceleration. Another word for this velocity here, especially when we're talking about rotational motion, is something called tangential velocity. So we'll cover that more in just a minute, but for now, good thing to know. 
So since centripetal acceleration is probably the thing that's most different from our normal motion, right? Everything before we had some sort of nice equivalent here. Uh, centripetal acceleration is a little different. Um, if we picture our circular path this way, centripetal acceleration is not the acceleration around the circle. It's not how quickly is it changing speed as it's moving around the circle. Rather, it's what's the acceleration that's pulling it in towards the center, so centripetal acceleration points towards the center, that keeps it moving on a circular path. So if we zoom in a little bit here on our circle, get a little bit better view here, what this looks like is we have the object, its momentum, and its sort of inertia wants to take it this way. And that's that tangential velocity that we talked about before. So that's the V that you would measure with omega r, or the meters per second speed. It wants to go that way at every point along the circle. So at every point along the circle, it wants to move that way. So like if you cut off the circle, all of a sudden, it would just go on that straight line path. Well, this acceleration, at every point, this acceleration is going to accelerate it back towards the center of the circle. So it's going to constantly be changing its velocity towards the center of the circle. And if you made these sort of triangles smaller and smaller and smaller at each and every point, you can see that it would slowly start to make a circular path. So as we zoom back out here, get everything back in place, uh, how do we calculate centripetal acceleration? Well, centripetal acceleration, AC, is going to be equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of the circle. So here would be the radius of our circle. So if we took our tangential velocity squared divided by r, that would give us our meters per second squared uh, acceleration. So this is our usual acceleration, meters per second squared. It doesn't have any weird radian units like other things had. Now there's another useful form here. Right? Remember that velocity was equal to omega r. So if we do a quick substitution here, omega r squared over r. Well, that's omega squared r squared. So omega squared r squared over r. And if we simplify that, we could get omega squared r, right? This r is going to cancel out with the squared there. And that's another useful way of finding centripetal acceleration. All right, so a quick sample problem here. Calculate the centripetal acceleration at a point 7.5 centimeters from the center of an ultra centrifuge spinning at 7.5 times 10 to the fourth revolutions per minute. So let's start with what we know. All right, what we know is that uh, we have a radius of 7.50 centimeters. Uh, since we usually do things in meters, let's go ahead and convert that now, 0 0.075 meters. Uh, we also know that we have 7.5 times 10 to the fourth revolutions per minute. Well, that's kind of a weird unit. We don't have really a place for it yet, right? It's not a radians per second. It's also not a meters per second. So it's something we know, but we'll probably have to do some work with. So 7.50 times 10 to the fourth revolutions per minute is also what I know. Okay, so there's my knowns. What am I solving for? Well, I'm solving for what is centripetal acceleration. Okay. And my plan. Well, if I'm going to solve for centripetal acceleration, right, I need two things. I need tangential velocity and I need r. So I have r, and I have my radius up here, but I don't have a tangential velocity. But I'm thinking this kind of unit here, revolutions per minute, like how many times it's going around the circle per minute, might be able to help me with that. So my plan is to use 7.50 times 10 to the fourth revolutions per minute to get tangential velocity, then get my centripetal acceleration since I know r. Okay. So let's see if we can do this. 7.50 times 10 to the fourth revolutions per minute. Now, I'm, I'm expecting that you know some things about circles here. Uh, for example, you could know that there are 2 pi radians per revolution. Right? So for example, 2 pi radians per every revolution. 
So for every revolution that it makes, it's going to cover two pi radians, right? Two pi radians in a full circle. We also know that, well, in a minute, there's 60 seconds. So in one minute, there's 60 seconds. And if we look, the units that we're left with are radians per second. So with just kind of a unit conversion, we were able to get our omega. And that gives me seven, get my pen back here, seven, eight, five, three, point nine, eight radians per second. And then we also know that centripetal acceleration, what we're solving for is omega r. So it didn't quite work out exactly like our plan, right? We were thinking about getting vt, but we found omega instead. But ends up working out well since we have a good equation for that as well. We could have taken omega in the radius and solved for tangential velocity and plugged it in, but we'll take the shortcut and use this equation. So AC equals 7853.98 radians per second times our radius, oops, actually omega squared r, times our radius 0 0.075 meters, and we get a centripetal acceleration of 4.63 times 10 to the sixth meters per second squared, which is pretty fast, but it is an ultra centrifuge, so it does kind of make sense.